We hope you're all well and safe. My name is Christy Miguel from Ayala Land International Sales, and I will be your host for today's webinar, 2021 Philippine Property Market Outlook. So before we start, may I just remind everyone that we will be will not be allowing any videos to be taken during this presentation. Instead, we will be providing an on-demand link, which is a recording of this live webinar for those of you who may have missed out today. Also, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, you may type it in the question and answer chat box, and we will try to answer them after our guest speaker talks. Um, thank you. So our keynote speaker for today has worked as a research manager for a research and consultancy firm where he handled business, political, and macroeconomic analysis prior joining Colliers in March 2016. He took part in a number of consultancy projects with multilateral agencies and provided research support and policy recommendations to key government officials and top executives of multinational companies in the Philippines. He prepares research publications covering the whole Philippine property market and contributes to Pan-Asia real estate reports about office, residential, real, re, retail, leisure, and industrial sectors. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Associate Director of Research of Colliers International Philippines, Mr. Joey Bondock. Hi, good afternoon, Joey. Hi, Chrissy. Good afternoon. How are and, uh, you? I'm good. Good afternoon That's to good. our Thank webinar you for participants as well. <laughs> Thank you for joining. I will turn the floor over to you. Thank you. So again, thank you, Chrissy, for inviting me and uh, to our participants. I think so far we have um, almost 180 uh, webinar participants. So thank you for taking time out and um, to join us this afternoon where I'll be providing updates on what's happening in the Philippine property and uh, what should we expect moving forward. But um, let me just uh, share with you my screen. I hope uh, you can uh, see it uh, now. So this is a uh, property market uh, presentation, basically an update on uh, what we see in uh, the market and uh, what do we project moving forward. So if you look at um, the Philippine economy for 2020, it contracted by 9.5%. So that is the deepest contraction since the Second World War. But what's um, positive here is that uh, economic agencies, credit rating companies are projecting the Philippine economy to rebound this year and grow by about 5 to 9%. And you know, a major plank of uh, this projected growth is OFW remittances, which um, a lot of analysts uh, believe will grow for 2021. In fact, for 2020, remittances have been holding firm, meaning they're not declining uh, compared to what um, some analysts have projected earlier. So um, this only indicates that Filipinos working abroad continue to send in money to the Philippines and help drive the demand for affordable to middle income uh, residential units. Um, lending rates remain competitive. So that's about 6 to 8%, mainly because the central bank has been trying to cut interest rates to prop up spending in the, in the economy and help support um, you know, the much needed economic growth. So let me just discuss here a few public projects that we believe would have a significant impact on Philippine property. Because at Colliers, we always say that infrastructure is one segment that will help drive and support growth in the Philippine economy moving forward. And when you talk about economic segments such as property, this is one sector that really benefits from the infrastructure projects uh, lined up by the government. So let me start here with, you know, what the government has lined up across the Philippines. So you have a lot of airport extension projects, Metro Manila subway, which is of course a major uh, project that, that will be built in Metro Manila and due to be completed 2025. We have 
bus uh, rapid transit we have coastal roads toll expressways uh, skyway 3 which was recently uh, completed and you know has really been getting a lot of um, good news good reviews from commuters from travelers from northern or southern philippines and even those from Metro Manila. So those that, uh, for example, went to Tagaytay um, yesterday or today, of course, benefited from the implementation of uh, Skyway 3. Even those that are moving to Pampanga or are traveling to Pampanga and are, say, looking at the Alviara projects, for example. You know, this is one infrastructure project that we believe will really be a game changer and um, will further stoke demand for residential projects northern and southern Luzon. So as I mentioned, Skyway 3 um, completion December of 2020 and a lot of uh, travelers are already benefiting from this project. Not only that, uh, because of this uh, project, it helps decongest EDSA. So it you know, also benefits a lot of Metro Manila travelers and commuters. MRT3 rehabilitation, that's a very interesting project as well, given that a lot of commuters uh, are still uh, using MRT3 as they move from one business district to another within Metro Manila. And of course, we're very optimistic with MRT3, mainly because, you know, we believe that projects near the MRT3 stations will achieve an appreciation in terms of prices as well as rental values even post pandemic so central luzon link expressway uh, its phase one is uh, due to be completed by 2021 subic freeport expressway uh, expansion has also been uh, completed bgc ortigas link bridge uh, they're looking at the first quarter of 2021 for its completion MIT LRT Common Station. They're also looking at 2021 for its completion. So it will benefit projects northern part of Quezon uh, City. So this will again be a major, a crucial infrastructure project uh, in the northern part of Metro Manila. Of course, Skyway uh, extension. This will further um, expand Skyway, especially benefiting our provinces in southern Luzon, uh, including Cavite and Laguna. MRT Line 7, um, which will uh, be extended all the way to San Jose del Monte in Bulacan. And of course, this is another uh, location where Ayala has, has a presence. And um, we believe that this will further stoke demand in the San Jose del Monte area. And SLEX Connector Road, again, this will further expedite the travel and commuting time of investors, of travelers within northern and southern Luzon. So again, this will be a major project, another game changer uh, for investors and commuters within these key hubs in Luzon, talking about northern and southern Luzon. And of course, Clark Airport modernization, which uh, hopefully will be operational first quarter of 2021 and this is another key project that will help you know further stoke demand in the northern and central Luzon region of course once this is completed it will help drive values of land and property in uh, northern Luzon region, especially Pampanga, which is of course a major hub for business operations for companies planning to expand outside of Metro Manila. So this again will provide so much promise, um, especially for uh, houses, condominiums, and even lot only projects in the Northern Luzon region, especially Pampanga. LRT1, Cavite extension, due to be completed 2022 and about 50% completed. So it will provide a better connection, improve connectivity between Metro Manila commuters and those that uh, are living in uh, Cavite. So again, another key infrastructure project that uh, we should be um, expecting to be completed in the next um, 18 to 24 months. And again, this is one project that will help uh, raise interest 
and properties in Cavite. And SLEC's uh, uh, fourth uh, phase, which will be completed in 2022, again, will benefit um, travelers, investors looking for properties in Southern Luzon region. Again, another major project in Southern Luzon is Cavite and Laguna Expressway. And um, this is an ongoing project due to be completed end of 2000. And 22, and again, one key infrastructure that will benefit Cavite and Laguna residents, or even those that are potentially looking for properties in southern Luzon region. Sangli, another airport uh, project that uh, will help raise demand in the southern Luzon region, especially in the Cavite area. And the EA redevelopment, of course, um, it will also help stoke demand in southern uh, Luzon region. And even for, you know, properties for integrated communities, townships uh, near the area, talking about Arca South, for example, which is, you know, one of the major business logistic districts moving forward. Manila Clark Railway. So again, another infrastructure project heading towards northern and southern Luzon that will benefit the commuters in the area, even uh, those that are still land banking and especially developers with strategic significant land bank in northern and central Luzon and talking about uh, Ayala, of course. So, Subway. Subway will have um, 18 stations in key strategic locations all over Metro Manila. So from northern part of Metro Manila, Quezon City, all the way down to southern part of Metro Manila uh, with stations near Arca South as well as uh, Ninoy Aquino International Airport Terminal 3. So another strategic, a very crucial infrastructure project, one of the biggest, uh, in fact, and largest in terms of a value that, that the government, the national government will implement. And um, it will have its uh, partial uh, operations in uh, 2026. The partial completion of some stations will likely uh, be uh, done by two th end of 2022. Again, Bulacan International Airport uh, due to be completed in 2025. Another interesting project, um, Northern, Southern, uh, or Northern and Central Luzon, and will help raise land values in uh, the Bulacan area. Of course, we know Bulacan is another thriving and emerging uh, business district uh, found in Northern and Central Luzon. And the completion and operation of Bulacan International Airport will only help raise that interest in Bulacan, especially for developers such as Ayala that have significant footprint and presence in Bulacan province. So Steplex extension, another uh, interesting project that, that is uh, gravitating towards northern part of the zone and again will help drive the demand for properties in the northern Luzon region, especially the key provinces that uh, it will uh, uh, traverse to so those uh, provinces such as Pampanga, Tarlac, Pangasinan, La Union, of course, again, will um, be benefit from the completion of this duplex extension that is due in 2022. So let me now give you a few um, ideas a few updates on what's happening in the property market. If you own a condominium now, will you be able to lease it out to the BPO employees? Because you know, the BPO sector is one of the major demand drivers for the country's economy as well as office and property market in general. So while we see some disruption in terms of business operations we are still optimistic because there are still some bpo companies that are still expanding despite the covid 19 pandemic and lockdown and so far across metro Manila, we have 12.3 million square meters of office space and um, this will continue to grow um, in fact for 2020 we saw the completion of uh, more than 420,000 square meters of new office space that was completed. And in 2021, 
to 2023, we will see the completion of about 730,000 square meters of office space across Metro Manila. And of course, condominiums, office buildings will benefit from the completion uh, or the continued hiring of uh, BPO employees. The BPOs, of course, at some point will be needing condominiums that uh, they need to lease out or for those, those that are working from home, they need bigger condo uh, space because they need to carve out their own home office. So the demand for condominium, of course, will likely grow even uh, beyond uh, the pandemic and no we still hear a lot of uh, good news uh, on the ground a lot of uh, investors millennials freelancers that are continuously uh, looking for condominium units to buy or lease out especially those that are planning still maximizing the very low competitive mortgage rates we have in the market right now so these are just some of the companies that occupied space so have the likes of Grab, Food Panda, Rush, um, TCL. So one key um, insight here is that you know these are companies that are from the BPO segments or business segments that are still growing despite the pandemic. Okay, so those are providing logistic services, um, food delivery, um, pharmaceutical, uh, those that manufacture drugs okay are still growing and we will still see these companies occupying office space and of course um, they have employees that will still require condominium or residential units moving forward so these are just a few of the outsourcing segments that are still growing despite the pandemic logistics you have the likes of banks you have Telco companies, Dito, uh, ZTE, Bank of America, and as I mentioned earlier, Roche and uh, Food Panda still expanding. And this only indicates that there are strong pillars for economic uh, recovery. And this will be led by some sectors that are continuously growing despite that economic uncertainty in the market. And some of these companies are leading that uh, growth or that recovery. And as I mentioned, those that are into essential uh, segments such as Food Panda, Roche, and other logistics providers. So the outsourcing sector has somehow proven uh, to be formidable or resilient despite the pandemic. You still have healthcare uh, companies, telcos, banking and finance, and even game development and animation that continue to expand despite the pandemic and during this uh, lockdown. So they will continue to look for office space uh, in 2021 and even once the market uh, recovers. And if you look at uh, the recovery enablers, so what will further raise the demand for office space? Okay, so aside from the COVID-19 injection, of course, the government has been uh, easing travel restrictions. Um, the POGOs are also reconsidering um, their um, businesses here in the Philippines are, are likely to stay here. Some of them are still operating and have, are contributing to a greater condominium and office space demand. Of course, the passage of some bills that help provide tax relief and give out incentives to a lot of businesses and those that are likely to infuse much needed support to the micro, small, and medium enterprises or small businesses that have temporarily closed due to the pandemic. This will likely be supported by those measures that the president will likely sign into law in the next few months. So let me now give you an update on what's happening in the residential market. Of course, there's some construction uh, delays. Uh, we're seeing some pandemic-induced construction delays because of lack of manpower. Um, construction workers had 
to be tested. So that has resulted in uh, delays in complete completion of new condominium units across Metro Manila. But so far, we have uh, close to 134,000 condominium units across Metro Manila. This is the number, the stock that we have as of end of 2000 and. Uh, um, while there was less completion in 2020, we will see uh, this number um, growing by more than triple in uh, 2020, or we expect more than 10,600 condo units across Metro Manila in uh, 2021, and that is pretty significant. Now, in terms of completion, uh, similar with what we see in the office market, there will be a rebound terms of uh, completion of uh, condominium units across Metro Manila, there was a um, delay, as I mentioned, in terms of uh, new condominium completion in 2020. And this will likely be carried over to 2021. And uh, of course, the projected uh, recovery will likely um, happen um, once the market sentiment starts improving. So the share of mid-income to the luxury um, condo development has been increasing also. For example, the share of uh, condos priced from 3.2 to 6 million, this is the mid-income segment, up to the luxury segment price starting 8 million in pesos is uh, becoming higher. It's getting higher, mainly because of uh, of course, the rising purchasing power of consumers. And these are mostly the condos, the prices of condos that are launched in the market, coming from your mid-income to luxury, or those start priced starting at 3.2 million pesos. So in terms of total take-up or demand in the market, they accounted for 86% of total units uh, bought in the market in 2020. And this is much higher than the 72 percent share that we recorded in 2019 so as you can see prices are um, you know becoming uh, higher but they're still being taken up in the market and this only indicates that there is the liquidity in the market and people you know are still taking advantage of very low and competitive um mortgage rates that we see in the market uh, right now mainly because you know the central bank has been trying to retain interest rates in the market so these are just some of the infrastructure projects that i also discussed earlier but what this only tells you is that these projects skyway 3 bgc ortigas link bridge mrt7 will help drive the demand for residential units moving forward so um, now is of course a very good time to invest because mortgage rates are very low and of course once the these infra projects are completed there will be a greater demand in the market so they, you'll be able to you know buy low sell high in a typical uh, investor mindset so again some of the projects that have been completed are likely to be completed 2021 up to 2022 and we have provinces such as Bulacan, Pampanga, uh, Laguna, Cavite, Batangas that uh, are benefiting or will benefit from the, the completion of these infra projects moving forward especially given that the travel time will significantly be reduced and as you can see here these house and lot and condominium projects are about 70, 80, 90 percent sold already. So moving forward, we will only see a much faster pace of uh, sales or residential take up in this province, especially because these are very attractive and that competitiveness and attractiveness for residential units will be complemented by the infra projects that I mentioned earlier. So in the residential market, these are the seg segments that are likely to recover quickly, especially talking about mid-income to luxury price segments. But what are the recovery in neighbors? What factors will help drive the demand for residential units? Again, aside from access to 
uh, vaccines, of course, there, there will be some improvement in terms of number of households that intend to buy new condo units. And that is based on a survey released by the central bank. Developers continue to offer attractive extended uh, payment terms. And I believe that Ayala Land is uh, one of those developers that have been providing this very attractive uh, payment schemes in the market. And of course, uh, the projected growth or recovery of the economy, which would range from 7 to 9%, 2021, 2000, and the 2020, and that will help uh, further uh, stoke the interest for residential property. So why property? Number one, because it has relatively less volatility compared to shares, Philippine Stock Exchange. Um, as you can see here, that yellow line, there has been a stable increase in prices after the Asian and global financial crisis, unlike the boom and bust cycle as represented here uh, by the yellow line, um, where it is practically characterized by an increase in prices one day and then immediately they will uh, drop. Uh, so there has been, uh, it has been a very volatile uh, Philippine Stock Exchange, mainly because it is also uh, much exposed to you know global economic uh, downturns and of course as you can see here there has been a sub um, significant or stable increase in prices and uh, that was even during the Asian and global financial crisis prices have somewhat uh, recovered so why residential market number one because uh, it has low volatility compared to the stock market condo prices have increased at the stable pace since 2007 and there's that potential uh, for that condo unit to be leased out especially the philippines has one of the more attractive rental prospects uh, because of bpo employees as well as other uh, foreign workers that are visiting the philippines and you know when you lease it out here in the Philippines, you have one of the most attractive uh, yields. So, in fact, uh, we ranked third only uh, behind Jakarta and Ho Chi Minh. So, again, that's that's my presentation. My, my key takeaway is that while we're seeing some economic uncertainty, definitely the path to recovery is uh, there, uh, especially the property market will definitely continue to be a very um, attractive economic segment condominium property will remain to be a viable investment option and if you want to learn more of course callers is very active on social media we have the website linkedin um, instagram twitter facebook and even on uh, youtube i also have a column in, in the inquirer and uh, my most recent column is out today uh, saturday so you may check out the printed copy or the online version so again that's uh, my presentation i uh, hope uh, you learned a thing or two and uh, we will be opening the floor for your questions chrissy Thank you so much for that informative and optimistic talk, Joey. I think everyone um, and all the attendees um, really learned a lot, especially about all the different and various infrastructures um, projects that's going around. Um, so I believe we have time for some um, question and answers um, right now. Um, so you guys may um, type in your questions in the Q&A box that's below. Um, and while we wait for some questions to, to come up, um, I actually have prepared a few questions for you, Joey, just to get the ball rolling. Okay, so given all of your extensive knowledge on what's happening in the Philippines, what's happening um, with all the infrastructure development, and the real estate market and everything. Say you had um, around say five to 10 million pesos to use to invest. Where would you, I would like to know, where would you um, personally invest in or what areas do you think um, would be great to invest in? Okay, interesting question because if you look at the infrastructure pipeline of the government and where these projects are likely to be completed. Um, 
two major regions will benefit from this. You have northern central Luzon as well as southern Luzon. So if you talk about the most viable locations for development or for property investment, definitely the likes of Pampanga, Bulacan, Tarlac, uh, stand out talking about northern central Luzon but also southern Luzon the more attractive locations will be Cavite, Laguna and uh, Batanga so all these provinces are some of the key areas that will benefit from the government's infrastructure push and as we always get call years um, areas that will benefit from the government's infrastructure program will achieve an increase in capital values or prices because demand will definitely grow and land and other properties within these areas also have the potential for uh, capital value or price increase. So that's, uh, those are you know very interesting feasible locations to invest in. Okay, nice. All right. Uh, we've got some questions coming in. Um, okay, so besides the vaccine, right, I'm sure everyone's very curious, what else is going to help the Philippine economy and also the Philippine real estate market recover? Well, aside from the COVID-19 injection, of course, uh, looking at the, you know, economic uh, projections uh, that analysts have been saying, uh, of course, infrastructure will definitely be a major plank of that uh, recovery and also the outsourcing segment, okay? Um, because if the office market starts to recover, that will also have a positive impact, not just on office leasing, but also on condominium leasing. Um, we hope that the tourism, the leisure sector also recovers soon, sooner than expected, because um, a lot of uh, tourists that went to the Philippines initially realized eventually realized that uh, they want to stay here and that that has also contributed to an increase in demand for condominiums as well as uh, you know an increase in the demand for um, um, other leisure oriented uh, projects so uh, those that are in Katagaytay for example or Cavite or Laguna and even some projects in Pampanga so you, you're getting demand from both from a lot of segments, especially once these uh, economic sectors recover, office, leisure, uh, as well as foreign employees, those that uh, are being uh, deployed to the, the Philippines. So we will definitely see a lot of uh, segments uh, recover and that should uh, help stoke the demand for uh, condominium units uh, for the property market moving forward. Okay, nice. Okay, so we have a question here about Alabang. So it says, yeah. Alabang has been hit pretty hard with the exit of many Chinese investors and workers during this pandemic. How do you see Alabang's future unfolding? Well, what's good about Alabang is that aside from, you know, their key business districts, you're talking about Makati, Fort Bonifacio, or Tigas in the Bay Area, um, we still see that potential for price increase in Alabang, uh, mainly because there's still that room for capital appreciation. And not only that, even if you see the exodus of some employees or Chinese employees, for example, Alabang remains an attractive location for the BPO sector for BPO companies that are looking for business districts at a discount. Because unlike Makati CBD, for example, office lease rates in this business district um, are very expensive already. So they, when they look for potential sites for locations outside of Makati or Fort Bonifacio, they gravitate towards Alabang, towards southern part of Metro Manila, because office lease rates are much cheaper. And of course, that should have a spillover demand on condominium uh, segment as well. So that's an interesting uh, trend that we're likely to see moving forward. Okay. Thank you. And then going even further south, <laughs> um, what will drive prices of property in Iloilo and other southern provinces up? Um, for Iloilo, we have seen a stable demand from end users. So Iloilo, of course, is center for academic 
um, institutions in uh, Visayas, especially in Western Visayas. And it is also a major source of Filipinos working abroad or being deployed abroad. And when we look at the prices of properties in Iloilo, whether it's house and lot or lot only, there has been a stable increase uh, in prices, mainly because much of the demand is driven by your end users, by the locals that are working abroad. So some of the you know more interesting projects for Iloilo are those priced starting at uh, 3.2 up to 6 million pesos per unit, uh, whether it's uh, house and lot or lot only project. So we believe that uh, there, will con there will remain to be a stable demand for uh, house and lot and lot only projects regularly, especially for the overseas Filipino uh, workers that are still looking for properties. And, what we have uh, noticed also for Iloilo is that uh, buyers are looking for properties, especially lots and house and lot units where they have bigger, more open spaces. So uh, these are just some of the factors that will help sustain that demand in Iloilo moving forward and help um, achieve a stable price increase over the next few years. Okay, thank you. And what about the outlook for the Visayas and Mindanao areas? Well, for Visayas and Mindanao, of course, for Visayas, let me start with Visayas. Still, your most um, attractive locations will be uh, Cebu, uh, Iloilo, Bacolod, especially Iloilo. Uh, we saw a significant take up of, of, of office space in Iloilo during the pandemic and lockdown. So that's a very interesting trend that uh, we saw. Um, for Davao, of course, the major property investment destination will remain, uh, I mean, for Mindanao, Davao will remain the major uh, property investment destination because the moneyed investors from southern uh, Mindanao, they continue to infuse money or invest in Davao. And that has resulted in the appreciation of property uh, projects in Davao City. So. Uh, we believe that moving forward, that should help sustain the increase of prices and the attractiveness of the about for, you know, leasing prospects for BPO companies that are looking for office space, which should help drive the demand for condos to be leased out. Another interesting point for Davao is um, starting 2016, we saw a stable increase in the properties, whether it's, it's lot only or house and lot projects. So that's an interesting uh, point and trend that we believe will continue um, even beyond the pandemic. Okay, thank you. So um, last year we noticed that um, in the midst of the pandemic, um, there was quite a big growth for the affordable market. And we noticed also that our Amaya sales grew tremendously. Um, do you see this this affordable market um, even um, doubling more this year? Well, definitely we will see stable demand for the affordable market because while we see the mid-income to luxury uh, segment uh, demand rising because prices have really gone up uh, since 2016, starting 2017. This is one segment that will continue to grow mainly because some, of course, investors will continue to look for uh, condos priced starting uh, 1.7 to 3.2 and then 3.2 to 6 million uh, pesos. So they will continue to look for projects at a discount and uh, they will continue to be on the lookout for uh, projects that are being offered with very attractive and competitive uh, payment Term. So we will definitely see a stable demand for uh, this price segment, um, especially because some employees that were initially uh, eyeing some mid-income projects will now probably look for the you know, more affordable condos and condos that are within the affordable segment, starting at 1.7 to 3.2 million pesos. So it will continue to be a mix of demand that will be coming from all price segments uh, basically and the affordable segment will continue to capture uh, a portion a significant portion of that uh, demand definitely okay great um, another question from our um, audience would be so for Pampanga and Parlock 
how much would be the price appreciation this year? If for investment purposes, what particular kind of property should I invest in? Thank you. Well, it depends on the project, but based on some anecdotal pieces of evidence that we have gathered, uh, prices of house and lot, lot only projects in Davao, especially for developers that have launched um, another phase of their project, they have raised prices by about five to ten percent. So that's a you know pretty good return already uh, for those that have invested early, right? But um, I think moving forward in terms of the attractiveness of projects, it will still be dependent on the type of investors that will be buying. So um, I think right now what we're seeing in the likes of Pampanga and Turlock is a very good demand for house and lot and lot only projects. I know a couple of uh, broker friends that uh, have really become aggressive in marketing and offering their house and lot and lot only project. And I also know some OFWs that uh, are looking for house and lot and lot only projects in Pampanga and Terlac. And of course, developers want to raise prices if they don't see a stable, uh, substantial demand coming from investors and end users. So that's a you know pretty good indicator for, for this Pampanga Terlac uh, market beyond 2021. Okay. Um, I think that's all out of time um so there you have it ladies and gentlemen once again thank you so much joey for your thank time you. today um i i definitely learned a lot um, <laughs> and 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 quite optimistic about yeah, this year especially I hope with vaccines coming in and, and exactly. quite a lot of infrastructure projects um in the works so yep. it seems quite quite optimistic yes thank um, you Christy. so Everyone, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, please stay safe. Um, before we officially end this webinar, we would like to present to you one of Ayala Land's estate. It's a video, so a city with direct access to key areas in the metro and fully integrated growth centers that champion um, synchronicity. Ladies and gentlemen, the city in sync, Arca South. Thank you so much, Joey. Over the past decade, we've seen how Metro Manila has sprung into a dynamic and progressive, large-scale and integrated metropolitan area with thriving economic centers. One major reason for its growth is Ayala Land, a fully owned subsidiary of Ayala Corporation. Ayala Land is the largest land developer in the Philippines that offers end-to-end -end real estate products ranging from residential, retail malls, offices, hotels and resorts, to construction and property management services. It was the first company to pioneer the development of the Makati Central Business District in the 1960s, followed by the second Central Business District, Bonifacio Global City, in the early 2000s. And now, adding to its impressive portfolio is Arca South. Arca South offers the same key livability features that Ayala Land has been known for. Quality homes, modern conveniences, connectivity, eco-efficiency, and local economic progress. Arca South is a contemporary business district straddling the borders of Taguig and Paranaque. Arca South is only 4.7 kilometers away from the Ninoy Aquino International Airport, 5 kilometers away from the Bonifacio Global City, and 7 kilometers from the Makati Central Business District. This city in sync has a total land area of 74 hectares, which is a fully integrated growth center that promises new opportunities. Speaking of green and open spaces, 40% of Arca South's total area is dedicated to open space, wide walkways, and bike lanes, which makes achieving one's active lifestyle possible. Aside from the open space, Arca South will have direct access to the North, South, and Central Manila through infrastructure projects such as the following. Skyway ramp with Arca South exit, which is an exit away from Makati Central Business District. Mega Manila Subway, which shortens travel time to Quezon City by 30 minutes. 
and Taguig Integrated Terminal Exchange, which will be the hub of over 160,000 commuters and 4,000 provincial buses per day that will provide accessibility from the estate to the southern provinces. Finally, the interconnected basement parking will give more open space throughout the estate and free up traffic on the street level. Its highly integrated location is currently accessible to and from key areas of the metro, making this the strategic spot for networking and convergence. Trine Enterprise Plaza, an Alveo Land office building, emerges at the gateway of Arca South, a strategic location cultivating settings for a network of ideas and collaboration, with plenty of retail and shared amenities for increased productivity and work-life balance. It has 12 floors of pre-selling office spaces, starting from 95 square meters. Trine Enterprise Plaza is enveloped by an all-glass facade with an unobstructed view. Ensuring this work-life balance is Ayala Mall's Arca South Mall. The 103,000 square meter lifestyle mall will be a few steps away from the Trine Enterprises and the surrounding residential buildings, making it the convenient focal point destination for anything lifestyle and entertainment. Arca South Mall will have over 350 stores to fit everyone's needs, from lifestyle to top fashion brands, specialty retail stores, to a slew of dining choices, all integrated by a wide park with a garden and open-air ambiance. Now, for people who are always on the go or perhaps a younger market looking for a more affordable option with accessibility to their workplace, business or education, then we have Avida Towers Vireo. Avida Towers Vireo offers residences from studio to three bedroom units and is perfect for the young families that are craving for a relaxing lifestyle amidst the fast-paced urban community. From here, you have direct access to Arca South's main street that connects you with the city's premier retail and entertainment hub, giving residents an endless array of options for shopping, recreation, and business. Within this city and sink, another refreshing residential development unfolds. Park Cascades. Park Cascades offers mid-rise and low density in the Alveo land community, immersed in the leisure of urban park side living. Vibrant, intimate, contemporary. A home where everything comes together. Park Cascades has three towers with a retail area on the ground floor and three levels of basement parking. Each tower has 15 floors with only 15 units per floor. Park Cascades offers a studio unit that has an approximate size of 26 square meters, one bedroom with 64 square meters, two bedroom with 89 to 92 square meters, and three bedroom with 117 to 119 in floor area, which will suit your every need. It also provides your leisure of choice with the various indoor and outdoor amenities, which consists of a central courtyard garden, a gym, function hall, boardroom, play area, outdoor function deck, lap, lounge and kids pool, and an outdoor lounge. Shall we explore the three bedroom unit? Oh wow! Right as you enter, you're greeted by a spacious open planned layout with a dining room adjacent to the kitchen. Perfect if you love to entertain guests. The kitchen is roomy with lots of storage, counter space, and a kitchen sink. And as you can see, the cabinets are made from laminated wood, while the counters are solid surfaces. Solid surfaces are actually a good thing to have, especially in a kitchen, as it is very low maintenance. You don't need to worry too much when preparing food since they're stain and scratch resistant. Overall, I love how you can maximize the space of the kitchen by adding bar stools for that extra casual dining experience. And right beside the kitchen, you can see a utility room which has its own full bathroom. This unit is 114 square meters with a very efficient layout. From the kitchen, it leads straight out to the dining area which can fit a table for six to eight people and then to the living room which flows seamlessly and directly to the nice high ceiling windows and door to the balcony. The open layout not only makes the space feel larger but it allows you to maximize its potential. 
It lets air circulate better and makes it possible for sunlight to flood into the dining room. What's unique about this project is it has the option to upgrade into a smart home. Their units are smart home ready equipped with fiber to the home connectivity so you can control your home via just one app. Now let's see where the bedrooms are. The first bedroom is the ideal size for a baby room or perhaps an office or an entertainment room, which is great if you love to watch movies. Cabinets are included as well so you don't need much adjustments for your storage needs. Now the second bedroom is slightly bigger to the first as it can fit a queen size bed plus a study and a reading nook. You may use this as a playroom for your kids. Imagine having a bunk bed here for them. Even some clients are transforming these extra spaces into walk-in closets. These two bedrooms have a common bathroom which is conveniently located between the bedrooms. And now finally, we have the master's bedroom with its own ensuite bathroom and a beautiful large window that allows natural light to come into the room. There is ample space for a queen-size bed and a comfy home office. This is really a comfortable space that's perfect for everyone who wants to live a relaxed lifestyle and be in a homey environment, both inside and outside the condominium. Park Cascades truly inspires an invigorating community with dynamic greens and open spaces which flows with life at every turn. While a big part of Arca South's land area is open and interconnected, at the heart of the district comes an option for those who are looking for a more intimate and low-density environment. Garden Court Residences is a more premium and luxurious development of Ayala Land Premier. Five towers rise amid sprawling parks, enfolding an expansive green core called the Garden Court. With over 20,913 square meters of land area, Garden Court Residences is designed around a sprawling 6,000 square meters of greenery with access to Arca Main Street and has dedicated retail spaces at the ground level, a living experience similar to One Surendra. It has a central courtyard, huge lawn spaces, garden pavilion, sky gym, swimming pool, garden lobbies, a social hall and deck, and two sky gardens that make this a truly interactive community. Here are some of the most remarkable units. Their residential offerings start with the one-bedroom classic that has an approximate size of 68 to 70 square meters. This unit has a comfortable living space and vibrant views of the estate with its expansive windows and an ample balcony area. Their two-bedroom courtyard suite has a distinctive open living space setup with a large balcony opening to views of the garden court and pockets of green. Its approximate size is a spacious 139 square meters and a balcony area of 17 square meters. Finally, their three-bedroom garden suite has an impressive 60 square meter veranda cascading onto the tapestry of the garden court. Promising an abundance of space in the stunning and well-thought layout, these three-bedroom limited selections are located at the ground level and are generously sized with 261 square meters per unit. Overall, the Garden Court Residences is a very flexible, exclusive, and unique setting that will surely give you the luxury of living both within a premium oasis and with the convenience of urban living. And now, we will be exploring Arbor Lane, the first development of Ayala Land Premier in Arca South. Located at the eastern portion of Arca South, Arbor Lane wonderfully harmonizes nature with aesthetic architecture in a vast development. Arbor Lane is an idyllic sanctuary and exciting retreat that cultivates affinities and embraces leisure settings. Residents can have it all, with gardens all throughout the property and various shared open spaces. Are you ready to explore this with me? Upon entering the foyer, you are immediately welcomed by this sprawling open space layout. You will see the very spacious gourmet kitchen, dining, and living area. This three bedroom unit is approximately 174 square meters. This is such a great space for gathering and entertaining your guests in style, no matter what the occasion is. 
The main kitchen is fully functional with built-in appliances such as cooktops and range hoods. You will also have provision for the main kitchen oven so you don't have to worry where to place it. And don't you just love this long countertop? This long countertop can double as a serving or even a grazing table for your next gathering. The dining area can comfortably fit 8 to 10 people, so it's really not going to be a problem to host guests or if you have a big family. Now on to the main living area. As you can see, it's sleek, modern, and made even more elegant by the high ceiling and the beautiful floor-to-ceiling windows that let in natural ventilation and light. And if that's not enough for you, you even have this special feature that really sold this for me. This is the Garden Lounge. Aside from offering you an outdoor space and natural views, it also serves as an extension of your living and dining or be made into a mini garden for plant enthusiasts. With its adjustable louver slats, sliding doors, and movable window panels, the lounge is adaptable to your various needs. Aside from this garden lounge, I think you should also know that 80% of Arbor Lane's units face the garden courtyards, so you will most likely have stunning green views from the comforts of your own unit. Just at the corner of the foyer is the powder room, strategically placed but still part of the common entertaining space. Your household staff's quarters, utility areas, and separate toilet and bath is strategically positioned through the kitchen. Now to the bedrooms. All bedroom units have their own ensuite toilet and bath with all bathroom fixtures being European grade. The bedrooms are spacious and you have the freedom to design them any way you want. Now, on to the master's bedroom. As you can see, the master's bedroom is quite spacious with its own ensuite toilet and bath. This bedroom also has the same large awning windows allowing both ventilation and protection from the rain. The master's bedroom also has its own walk-in closet space with loads of storage and great lighting. Having segregation like this allows you to really organize your things or have an overall neat setup. Truly, this three-bedroom unit at Arbor Lanes offers an upscale and luxurious living at its best. After exploring the beautiful estate, features, and properties, everything truly comes together within Ayala Land's Emerging Growth Center in Taguig. In Arca South, all demands of contemporary lifestyles and business are coordinated and synchronized so everyone can thrive, work, play, and live. Now, all that's left for you to do is to come and join us in this progressive city in sync. Book a visit now and see you in Arca South.